because, as my uh, late great mom said, ah, yeah, she said ah, yeah, she said, was she a parrot? She said ah. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. All right, you ready, buddy? Yeah. Are you sure? You don't look ready. I'm a little hot. Oh. Uh, look, could you pop me down just 20% or something? Oh, you're a little hot? Mic-wise. How's Tesla that? Into, I mean, ear, ear, uh, earphone. How's headphone. that? Yeah, it's good. Is that better? Mm-hmm. Great. So mm-hmm. you weren't ready. You said you're ready, and then I just sort of, you proved that you weren't ready. Have we started, Harley? Yeah. Okay. But, now I'm ready. So now you're ready. Now I'm ready. So officially I should hit the theme music now? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, now that's right, ladies and gentlemen. You on the Holland Highway podcast, I uh, do guarantee I'm doing a Cajun voice. Mm. Do you like Cajun? Cajun what? Cajun voices. I'm doing a Cajun voice now. I do guarantee. Oh, boy. I do. Uh, well, I, yes, I have an affection for the Cajuns because when okay. I was young, every third song that discussed rambling because yeah. a lot of 70s songs were rambling. Oh. They're always heading to New Orleans <laughs> yeah, to yeah, see yeah. their Cajun queens. Yeah, yeah, so there's right. always Cajun yeah. queen and New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. And I was like yeah. 13 and living yeah. in North Hollywood. And I was like, I don't know what either one of those two yeah. things are. Yeah. I couldn't find New Orleans on the map. Yeah, and you didn't even and know I've what never it was. met a Cajun queen, but yeah. that guy sounds like he's having a hell of a time. Now, when they say Cajun queen, do they mean like, some kind of woman decked out in Mardi Gras, or do they mean like a guy dressed like a queen? Like, what do we? What's I the never queen? really broke down the game film that far. Yeah. I just know maybe should have that he was a guy who rambled, okay. and he had women stashed, you know, basically all over the country. Whoa! And when he stashed into, like a serial killer, yeah, like buried. I'm not sure; it's unclear. But he would show up. He'd, he'd have a roll in the hay with them, but then he had to he had to move on. Wow. He'd have a roll in the hay with them? I wonder if he ever had a, had a donut in the hay with them. Oh, yeah. No, you're thinking dinner roll. Right. I, I was talking well, that's what you more. Said. Well, this it's a metaphor for oh. having intercourse. Oh, so why didn't you just say he was fucking them in the hay? It's, it doesn't sound as eloquent, and I'm sort of a wordsmith. Okay. I mm-hmm. didn't know your last name was Smith. See, that's that's again. It's it's a metaphor. I mean, it's a it's a it's it colloquialism of of, of it's shaping words. It's a what? Colloquial, colloquial, colloquialism. Mm. Colloquial, and you're what a, a wordsmith? You said. Colloquial. <laughs> 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 I have to see it written now. Maybe just a smith. colloquially. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know how you spell that. How do you spell that? Well. Let's not start the show okay. off with All pressing. Right. I know how to spell it, but they don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't want to show off. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, Cajun. Okay, good. I'm glad you like a little spicy Cajun. Mm-hmm. Um, what I want to do, though, buddy, because you know everything. I told you last time here, you're one of these guys, you know everything to me. You're, you're like the great and powerful Oz. Mm. Like, I even have a poster of you in my bedroom at home. Like, when I pull my curtains at night, I have a picture of you with green face. Really? Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. Thank you. Because it's just Adam knows all things. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, so what I wanted to ask you is, bro, have you ever shoplifted? Mm-hmm. What, when and where? Um, a young age, you know, 12, 13, or 10. That was right you know, around the way you were, time you were looking to ramble down to New Orleans. Yeah, giving some of my Cajun queens. <sighs> um, uh, candy. Just candy. sort of candy, 7-Eleven, you know, 10 years old. Chocolate bars. Do you remember specifically a, an item that you just I, had to have? I remember two things as it, as it pertained to um, shoplifting. Okay. Um, I had a large army coat, like a, a big, big army surplus kind of baggy co- coat. Camo, big, camo. 
It was just green, I think, but it had big pockets and big baggy oh, like, pockets. Like a Rambo coat when, like like Rambo. when Rambo was going across that bridge into, yeah. into the mountains, that and opening shot. Dennehy told him to give him yeah. a ride to Portland, and yeah. then he saw him in his rear view turn around <laughs> and start walking back across the bridge. Okay. That jacket. So you're like a 7-Eleven Rambo. Yeah. Oh, no, wow, no. Man. That was at Topper's Supermarket in North Hollywood, which oh. doesn't exist anymore. Okay. But I also, for a small period of time... Did you say Topper's? Topper's. In North Hollywood? In North Hollywood. Well, also a sex act in North Hollywood. Yep. Have you ever had a Topper? I've, I've had a roll in the in, hay. In the hay, yeah. With the Topper. So I, I had a top hat okay or, uh, no it was a it was like a bowler or something it was it was it a was, top hat what are you a gentleman shoplifter i say good man look over there <laughs> yeah i stole all a my monocles hat. yeah now it wasn't a top hat it was a, a i guess i call it a, a derby or a bowler or something like that aren't those from the 40s Probably earlier. Sort of a, a Laurel and Hardy, you know, kind of hat. You were like the comedy thief? Yeah, I had God. I had that hat. I remember wearing it for a little while. And... Um, <laughs> Ooh, look at the chocolate bar. Laurel and Hardy. And I remember going to the 7-Eleven in Van yeah. Nuys. And, yeah, uh, oh, gang and country. Took, uh, yeah, not back then. Yeah. And, and I, I took candy and i put it in a hat and then i put it back on my head you had candy on your head yeah i think some it's still there also a sex act in yes. north hollywood mm -hmm. candy head mm -hmm. yeah she's good <laughs> Whoa. all right so here's where i'm going with this bro mm -hmm. you dressed up like a clown like laurel and hardy like rambo you made shoplifting fun. Mm -hmm. It was a costume pageant for you. It was mm -hmm. it was Mr. Dress Up. It was like, oh, Rambo's going in to get a Snickers. Mm -hmm. Oh, Oliver Hardy's going in for some Pringles. Oh, Candy Head's going in for a, a Popsicle. Cut to now, bro. Bro, Sefiosh. Mm -hmm. $982. You can go on a stealing spree... In any store in California, you can walk in, steal in front of the employees, in front of other customers, and just walk out with as much as you can grab, no costume at all, just as you, and go out the door, and it's all legal. It's like a ticket now. Right. What the hell's going on? And not only that, they passed a new law where employees cannot stop said thieves from leaving the store with stolen merchandise. That which in turn means that if you try to stop a thief, then you're going to jail or you're getting charged with a crime for stopping someone committing a crime. What's going on? The, the world's crazier than Forrest Whitaker's left eye right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, what is happening, guy? Well, we... I These are sort of progressive policies. Yeah. And... Progressive policies put too much faith in humanity. Just explain. They go, look, um, people will do the right thing. Oh, you know, yeah, we will, yeah, yeah. We will provide clean injection zones where people can use clean needles right. discreetly addicts, in San yeah. Francisco. And we rely, you know, we don't want to make prostitution illegal because we don't want to vilify or incarcerate these women. We, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people, black and brown kids aren't achieving the math test scores that we want. So we're going to lower that number. Right. We're making a lower number. And they don't realize it's, it's humanity will stay on the straight and narrow or we will go fucking off the rails right. in pure Sodom and Gomorrah style. Uh, you let us to do it, do it, we'll do it. Yeah. And that's what you, that's what Los Angeles and Portland and San Francisco and Seattle is like, leave the homeless alone, let them live in dignity. You, okay. Now we got a problem. You yeah, got a huge yeah. problem. So, you know, I was funny. I was doing this bit a little bit on stage as I was, trying to work it out yeah because i grew up around i grew up in los angeles and i had a very sort of hippie mom 
Okay. And and like it, just before you get to how like how hippie like what are we talking like flower sundresses smoking the ganja listening to Hendrix mostly hippie and that didn't want to work super angry all the time and always talking about how much better Europe was than here and housework naked like vacuuming nude in Didn't, front no, of the kids no housework no oh, no, no housework just, just nude just hang around and angry nude in the house in front of the kids yes you saw your mother nude all day no but i'd i'd like to move on with this story so I was well i'm just trying, trying to appease you with an answer well i'm just trying to you know <laughs> sounds like a hippie some some hippie mothers breastfeed their kids well into their late teens Oh, I didn't know that. So I'm just looking at your mouth right now to see if you have nipple lips. <laughs> I think you, how old were you when she stopped breastfeeding you is what I want to know about the hippie mother. I was too young. I don't remember. You being honest now, candy head? <laughs> yes. God. All right. I don't know if I trust you. You're I'm, a thief. I'm going to attempt into to seven. finish okay, the story. Okay, go. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> I grew up. Hearing about, you know, in Europe, yeah. and in Europe, in Denmark, and yeah. in Sweden, you know, oh. they let the children drink wine at the dinner table, right. you know, and everyone walks around nude and there's no rape, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's yeah. no, and then in, in Denmark and in Sweden and in Europe, you know, it's all this stuff. And I started, and they always said, we should do that here. You right. know, whatever they are, they've legalized prostitution. They have prostitution zones where people right. can go. It's safe. And in, in Denmark, you know, in Amsterdam, they have a red light. And, and I always wanted to say to them, that works in a kind of civil society. Right. I was going to say. We're animals. Bingo. And, and, I, and I, I came up with this uh, mm -hmm. demarcation line. Okay. Which is in those countries and societies yeah where let's just say it's halloween okay and on halloween there was always that house on the block that they were out of town or out for the evening and they'd leave that plastic pumpkin and be filled with candy and they'd have a note just limit yourself yeah. to one piece right, please right. right yeah i said if you live in a society where Nine out of ten kids who show up at that house just take the one piece yeah. and leave. Then you can implement these right. kinds of ideas. Yeah, we America, Too our savage. society yeah. is the first kid shows up, dumps the plastic pumpkin into his pillowcase yeah. and takes all the candy. The second kid shows up, sees there's no candy in the pumpkin, takes a shit in the pumpkin, and then wow. the third kid drop kicks it through the living room window. Well, doesn't the that, third... If that's our society, then we can't have any of this. But doesn't the third kid look in the pumpkin and go, mmm, milk chocolate, and think he got fresh candy? Oh, Harlan. Well, it's... Uh, I it's mean, so in the, scatological. Well, it's dark. There's only a candle <laughs> in the pumpkin. It, you chocolate, would know poo, chocolate. that it's not a Tootsie Roll. Well, here's here's what's interesting. I love it how you picked Halloween, where it's always, always Halloween at 7-Eleven for you. Right. But here's the thing. As soon as you said that... I, I am the word that popped into my head. I went, daintiness. Those countries over there, there's a daintiness to them. There's yes. society. There's there's a good morning. How are you? You know, almost right. like a almost like a Norman Rockwell. Good morning. How are you? Oh, a chocolate. Thank you. But but here we're too animalistic. We're too primal. The, the America's got this kind of kind of take take take. Exactly what you said. So yes. now. Now I feel like this this system they set up for shoplifting was probably set up for people in need, people that didn't have means, maybe spent the night where they didn't have something to eat. So why not set up something where maybe if they have to do this, it's $50, $60? Do you know, even on your best day with your your black credit card, your American Express... Have you ever gone in and bought $900 worth of groceries? No. And, and it's so funny when you hear these politicians like yeah. AOCs. Like, so a mother goes in and steals some bread for her hungry children. It's like, yeah. is that what we're talking about? Yeah. I didn't see anyone yeah, stealing yeah. a baguette. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. stealing flat screens, furniture and yeah. electronics. I know. You know, like bags of Nikes and, yeah. and jewelry and diamonds. Yes. And it's, uh, it's, it's a free for all, 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 all these policies are just, they're, they are 
doomed to failure. But when and at what point and how much do we have to pay the law-abiding citizens? And by the way, wasn't it the almighty creator God that said uh, on en- engraved in one of the tablets, thou shalt not steal? Like, should some, like, cheesy politician up in uh, Sacramento supersede the word of the Holy Lamb, Lord of the host, God all creator, God mighty, Lord Jesus, sweet Jesus, Lord, what, I, yeah. do you know the rest of it? I don't know. No, listen, we're, we're such idiots, yeah. especially California, especially Los Angeles. Like, every once in a while, they'd be like, oh, the Ten Commandments were carved into a statue in front of the courthouse or something. Yeah. And then some asshole athe- atheist group would want it taken down and we'd yeah. have a big argument about it. And it's like, I'm an atheist. Um, uh, maybe I'm agnostic or, or atheist. I have no religion. Never I thought did. you were a wordsmith. I never come from anybody who's ever been to church a day. I've never been to church. I have no interest in it. Yeah. I still want the goddamn... Sorry for using the Lord's name in vain. I still want the goddamn Ten Commandments in front of the library because I want people to follow the Ten Commandments. Should you be using those in the same sentence, the goddamn Ten Commandments? That's the wordsmith gives me the license to do that, Harlan. Well, more of a condemned wordsmith now. That's right. So you see how wordy you are at the gates of hell trying to dock your way out of eternal don't brimstone. Don't steal, uh, don't kill, or murder really mm-hmm. is what it is. Uh, don't. Do not covet your neighbor's oxen. Like, don't do any of it, and we'd have a much better society. Well, here's what's really pinging me is it's like, okay, let's say you got the downtrodden, you got the homeless, and you you got to feel sympathy for them. Sometimes that they, they do need something. But then what if the, 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 the woman or the man, the blue-collar housewife or the man that's got four kids... He's working at, uh, you know, at 7-Eleven or he's working at the mechanic shop or she's a cashier at Walmart and she's getting like two grand a month to feed the family and pay the rent and she sees these people walking out with armfuls of stuff, $900 at a time, which I think once they leave the store... They could go back in and do it again. It's not like there's a time limit. Uh, by the way, does it? Who even cares what the dollar amount right. is? They're just stealing everything they can steal. There's no right. repercussions. But what I'm saying, at what point does she just go? You know what? I'm doing things the right way, but yet I'm allowed to do what they're doing. I've got four kids. I'm putting in you know 80 hours a week. Why don't I just do that? Like, at what point are people going to start feeling like a chump? for not taking what's available to them. And then you go, well, well, when do the laws break down further? Like, when is rape? You know, okay, you can't, you can rape, but only for 20 minutes. <laughs> the priest can molest the boy, but only uh, for 15 minutes. You can mm. murder the family, but only two of them, depending on the size. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you start watering down the laws, and what happens to us? Well, we cease to be a society. Right. We start to come undone. And this has been going on for a long time in this city, for sure, and in the state. Because, and and by the way, we we get what we deserve because we vote in insane people. Like, if you hear the city council, I just heard couple of months ago a woman on the city council was they were discussing making it a felony to if you had more than 10 catalytic converters in your possession or something because you're you're dealing catalytic converters that are being stolen off of everyone's okay. car okay yeah uh half the people i know have had their catalytic converter ripped out of their car wow. this woman is against this and she blames Toyota for making them too easy to remove from a car. Now, if you have that kind of thinking and they're making policy, then your city is doomed. Yeah. It, you cannot have people who think that way yeah. creating policy. But- we're, we're, we're L.A., is one of the dumbest cities on the planet yeah. in terms of policy. I mean, you think about what we just got through. We just went through COVID. Yeah. We had one insane haggard witch and her daughter 
who's not even a medical MD, set policy for one of the biggest cities in the world, and we just listened to her. Who was that? Barbara Ferrer. Oh. And, and whatever her and her Yenta friends on the city council decided, yeah. that's what we did. But Whether it crushed businesses or hurt yeah. kids or destroyed economies or it was based in any signs whatsoever was all neither here nor there. We let a hand, we let a gaggle of crazy yentas yeah. shut our city down for two years. And we all just sat there and took it. And, and Except for me who said a bunch of shit about yeah, you it. Did. And then everyone yelled at me. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, you pussies need to apologize now. Cause yeah. I was right about everything, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But here's the other element that plays into this, which is super frustrating when you get the voting ballot sent to you in the mail, you know, or it, it, it lists all the, the politicians and it just says the party they're in. It doesn't right. say if they support shoplifting, if they support this, if they support that. You don't know who they are. Outside of the main governor whose name you hear every day, yeah. you don't know. You probably don't know 99% of the people listed on the voting ballot. No. You don't know what their stance is. You don't know what what they should have is some kind of thing on YouTube where you can go in and watch a one minute or two minute teaser clip of the poli said politician running going, I believe in this, I don't believe in that, I believe in this. So you know exactly what they stand for. All all and you I, can be informed. All I would need is just a brief little reminder, like under this woman who's running for city, whatever, yeah. it would just say, bitch who blamed Toyota yeah. for people stealing catalytic <laughs> yeah. converters. I would go, oh, she's nuts. Right. Okay, not voting for her. But that's the thing. Nobody knows. Right. I, don't even, I didn't even know that woman's name. The average person is too busy on TikTok or eating yeah. at McDonald's or at their job. They don't know the names or policies of end. So you're just voting blindly if you're voting at all. Yes. And it's it's just such a messed up system and that's how we get these nutty people on both sides of the the aisle that are are making these horrible decisions I feel. And we just all got to live with it. Yeah, listen, I agree. I would just vote Republican if I lived here just it, it's never going to work, but at least their policies aren't yeah. aren't, aren't insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, depending on who you are, I, I'm not affected by their policies. Yeah. So then I would vote. So what? Them. What do you? What? What's the? What, what? What's the forecast for people like in this country? What? What? Do, what do you say is like? Like, where's it all going? Where does it all end? What? What? What's your vision of the future with all this kind of stuff? Um, safe spaces and octagons. Uh -huh. uh, you're just going to have to head. I'm. I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to go to Texas or Florida really? or Nevada. For real? Yeah. Well, I don't want to live in this fucking dumpster fire anymore. Yeah. Like I, it's a shit show. There's yeah. homeless people everywhere. It's yeah. a mess. We're not something. There's something wrong with LA and there's something wrong with California. They've yeah. stopped governing correctly yeah. or effectively. Yeah. And they need to admit they were wrong. Look, I don't want, if there's another pandemic I don't want a crazy gypsy witch lady locking my kids out of their school and right. telling me I can't leave the house. I, I don't want to do that yeah, anymore. Yeah. I don't even want to risk that. So do you really technically have plans to get out? Are you looking yes, into it? 100%. Really? And do you have a, do you have an exit date? Um, I, I, I would always joke that, uh, I will be attending my kids high school graduation in a U-Haul. I will, I will wow. pull up and watch it from my U-Haul. Wow. One toot on the horn and leave. Hopefully your kid done. graduates and he owns, starts a moving company. That'd be That's perfect. That's right, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I doubt it. Wow. <laughs> too lazy. Wow. <laughs> so what, okay, so that's you, but what, what do you think regular folks do that are trapped here? They don't have the means to leave. Like, how, how, how does the system, like, the what has to happen which is a sad sort of state of affairs yeah is when i say to people when is this going to end like when, I've, I've lived here my whole life i've yeah. seen all the bad policies and what they bring yeah and then everyone says we haven't quite bottomed out yet like we haven't we haven't hit bottom we're getting yeah. close 
We're not quite there. Yeah. And then I say, I don't understand why we have to hit bottom yeah. before we start enacting some change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, let's say you have a son and he got a DUI and you went down the f- few weeks later and you saw his car was all scraped up yeah. and you found some, uh, you, you found some methadone in his ashtray in his room and you found wow. do we need to wait until he flatlines before yeah. we seek rehab yeah. for him or yeah. could we go hey son yeah i see where this is heading yeah yeah it's not a good place uh as your father yeah. i think we should really talk about a program before you flatline yeah. or do i have to wait till we have to fucking call the paramedics yeah. but that's who we are so why is why is everyone so like naive to it then? Why why are people just letting things flatline? Because as my uh, late great mom said, uh huh, yeah, she said ah, uh? yeah, she said was she a parrot? She said ah uh-huh. before um, I don't know. It's like Gavin Newsom was running or getting recalled or something, and yeah. Larry, Larry Elder, who I like, was running, and and she just went. I don't know who this Larry Elder guy is, but Gavin Newsom, Democrat, and that's who I'm voting for. And I'm like, all right, but uh, but his policies are all bad. And it's right. like, yeah, but he's nice. This is the, this is the conundrum. Uh, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Do you and know that word conundrum? Oh yeah. What is it? It's a. Um, <laughs> you're asking me for the definition of conundrum. Yes. Uh, a confusing choice. Okay. Correct carry on <laughs> well yeah look uh, you set up your wordsmith i gotta I fact know. check you as i, get, I go along i get you and you, you're doing great thank like you. you've nailed everything yeah um but yeah this is the thing people that goes back to what i was saying people don't know who these people are what they stand for what their policies they don't are. really care and, and, so, and this 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 state and this city are so goddamn dopey yeah but they're really just kind of set in their ways and it's really kind of sad but do you see it spreading like a cancer across through the whole country like i think it's no, already I, in I new just, york and chicago uh, well and, those cities are all like ruined i just think the right. the, the other places people are just going to move to florida they'll move to texas but is there a point in america where this kind of governance is like it has a foothold here. You can't fight it even if you want to, regardless of how stupid and how flatlining it is. So is there a point where this sort of contamination bleeds into the rest of the country and as astute as the other citizens are, they're powerless to stop this this approach, this wave of our stupid governing? And and it 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 fills their states up, and and soon the whole country's just standing there. Okay, I, I guess this is us now. I think what that it's going to do me. is it's going to continue to encroach, sort of, uh, with impunity on all the already blue cities. You know, you know Seattle, Portland, San right. Francisco, Los Angeles. The dumb blue cities are, are going to go further in that direction and get worse and worse. And then the people that move to the redder places where there's more law and order and less, you know, regulation and stuff like that, they're going to have a strong visceral reaction to anyone who's trying to pitch the, the shit they fled in. Right. Sort of like, you know, Cuban Americans are pretty conservative people and you go well hispanics uh traditionally vote you know for progressive yeah but not cubans because they under they know what it's like to live in a totalitarian yeah, sort of dictator. they know yeah. what it's like to be suppressed so yeah. they don't vote you know for the governor who wants to lock down the state with covid they vote for the one who wants to open the state right. with covid so the people that have experienced it and got like a front row seat to it will move on to places that are more hospitable to them and they will reject it when it tries because th- the whole thing about the sort of it's called a progressive movement it's yeah. got the word progress and movement in right. it you know that's my wordsmithing yeah oh, showing unbelievable yes unbelievable so you tell me what part of progressive and movement 
would ever suggest that they're going to stop or slow down or pump the brakes. They move on to their next crazy crackpot, insane idea, and they move fast. You know what but I mean? But that's my point. That progressive also means like somehow, by whatever means, even if people move to a state that doesn't share the same ideas, I feel like all this radical stuff is sl- sort it's of forcing always, they're its always way, attempting. Cr- creeping in, it's progressing, yes. as the word says. And and yeah, you can resist it and, and go to this state and go to that state because they can't get me here, but I feel like those walls are coming down where it's almost like this this mold starting to grow across yes. the surface of the country it's i it's I know. really scary I, well i think what it is is people are now on to them and we weren't on to them but they're on to them but to what effect can they stop it i feel like they're on to them and they're like oh we know what you're doing and here comes the mold we right. know what you're doing yeah we don't like that but they're letting the mold consume them and grow over them it, it almost feels like yes it's it's it, it's weird it's like that old invasion of the body snatchers movie where it's like ah! you know and it's like everyone's becoming uh, it's strange well i was funny because i was talking to dr drew about this yesterday Uh-oh. and i said it's really they move you're saying mold it's like to me i said it, it's like ivy where you see it's like at the bottom of a house or something Creeps up. and then like a few months go by and you just see it's crept up a, a little yeah. bit but if you come back in four years it's taken over the that's side of mean. the house that's what i mean but it, it takes a it's so slow it's so incremental that you don't see it but i told him what covid did is it sped it all up for me i got to watch the ivy go right. up the side right. of the house i got to see how these people work in real time yeah. in fast time instead yeah. of that because I've been here my whole life, and, and the way they work is this weird kind of, everything is super slow, and it takes a long time, but COVID fast-tracked it, and I was like, oh, I see how you people operate now. So it was kind of eye-opening Well, it was also this, too. It was also an example might be, even in nature, the ivy understood the rules of progression. It's like, okay, photosynthesis and growing, we're allowed to creep up the trunk this fast, but then all of a sudden the ivy just went fuck mother nature and the rules right. and we're going to go up this fast and right. we don't care who's watching and we don't care if everything else is going you're not allowed to do that but right. they just blatantly it feels like rules were broken and agendas were pushed yes to to but i i'll, I'll it's tell you frightening. I'll, I'll tell you what i so here's what i think yes finally i think i asked you this about <laughs> 28 minutes ago please most we are at a deficit the, the progressive movement people versus whatever you want to call libertarian, Republican, whatever, they're at a deficit. Yeah. We're at a deficit. And the reason we're at a deficit is because our goal is to just be left alone. Yeah. We, my agenda is a non agenda. I would right. like to raise my kids, live take and care let of my live. house, pursuit live, of live, happiness, live and let live. Yeah. Their agenda is get very involved right. with you and your life in terms of regulations and, and you everything else. You should be else. doing this. You right. should be going there. You yeah. should yeah. doing this. Yeah. It's not, you know, you're saying homeless or, or it's unhoused. You know what I mean? I hear right. my yeah. pronouns. Like yeah. they're trying to control. Yeah everything that comes out of your yeah. mouth and every thought that goes into your head right. and my word of deficit because we are saying i just want to be left alone yeah so anyone who's had a crazy neighbor and i've had a few of them yeah always gets the shit kicked out of them by their neighbor because my goal is to never have an interaction with the neighbor right i'm not gonna if the frisbee goes over the fence i'll hop over it grab it and jump right back into my yeah. house if if my branch is growing into their yard i'll just trim it and throw it back in, into my yard that's yeah. my if, yeah. if, if if their stereo is a little bit loud on a saturday night i'll yeah. just put some cotton in my ears and if i'm going to bed early yeah that's yeah, yeah. fine Th- but if they and we've all had these neighbors they, yeah. are looking for any excuse to, uh, excuse me excuse you yeah. i know you guys are enjoying yourself in the pool but my son is taking a nap and i know it's four in the afternoon yeah. but yeah do you think you could get, if, if that's what motivates them you're ruined you, you're ruined and that's that's what i'm saying to drew i'm just a neighbor who wants to be left the fuck alone but you want to get all up you want to get in my grill you want to tell me everything and here's a new set of rules to follow 
in the state you live in. So we're always going to get our ass kicked by these people because we don't want to do, we don't want interaction. You know we don't want policy change on them. You know you're yelling at me, right? I am yelling at you because I'm motivated. So oh. we're always going to get screwed. Well, are you toning it down now? Yes, I'll bring it down. I mean, I was feeling a bit threatened, almost like a crazy neighbor coming at me. <laughs> Yeah, what's with all the knocking, bro? <laughs> That's the neighbor. Wow. He wants to know what you're doing. Do you think it turns out you're maybe the crazy neighbor? Is somebody in your yard smoking a cigarette? Because the yeah. wind, because I can smell yeah. I, I can smell it. I'm in my home. I have the screen. The window's open. The screen is down. Is somebody... Man, I bet Somebody's you're... smoking a cigarette. Is somebody in your yard with a cigarette... It's coming into my my son I bet, has as I bet my your son neighbor, has asthma. I bet your neighbor's great at knock knock jokes. Who's there? Lettuce. <laughs> Lettuce who? Lettuce in. It's cold. <laughs> you don't knock in the middle of a knock knock joke. For a wordsmith, it's called a knock knock you know, joke. If you're gonna be a wordsmith, at least know the basic knock knock jokes. Have mm. you ever done that with your neighbor? Have you ever gone over and be the con? Would it be the confrontee? Never. Never. You've never gone over never ever gone and said, neighbors. hey, you know, listen, uh, I'm never. trying to sleep. Never. Come never. on. Never. Not once. Never. I've had a million <laughs> crackpot neighbors bang on my door, but I've never. Okay. Well, let me ask house. you this. Has there ever been one doing, let's say some guy's revving his Harley at three in the morning, 20 feet from your bedroom window. Has there ever been a scenario where you wanted to, but you just didn't leave the house because A, you didn't want to be that guy or B, you didn't have the courage. I have wanted to do that 2000 times. So what's an example? Never done it. What's an example of one of those moments where you were just like, oh, I'd like to go over there. You know. Who's there? Lettuce. <laughs> Lettuce who? Lettuce in. It's cold outside. God, I told you the first time, guy. <laughs> By the way, how's your arthritis? You just beat the shit out of your knuckles. I know. My hands are fucked up. Um, well, uh, yeah, neighbor. There had uh, to be something where you were just yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, we've I've had the, them throwing the fucking party with the live band. And it's, you know, really? 1 a.m. And you hear the bass thumping and yeah. stuff. And I would have loved it just go turn it down or whatever yeah. but it's like or having, shoot it up they're having a party shoot it up shoot it up uh-huh. yeah they're enjoying themselves i'll put the pill on my head and go to bed come no not yeah. you oh yeah okay i have <clears throat> never bought a lottery ticket i've never been in a car accident and i've never gone to a neighbor and told them to do anything wow have you ever rolled around naked with a priest oh yeah Three out of four ain't yeah, bad. Yeah, not bad. Huh. But only for 15 minutes. He didn't want to get in trouble. Yeah. In LA. Yeah, it's legal for 15 minutes. Yeah, thank God he was fast. Earlier when you were yelling at me, when you were coming mm-hmm. at me, real, your eyes were almost watering. Were you about to cry? Like you, you were very impassioned. No. You think you were you were getting so fired up you, you were almost bringing yourself to tears? No. Well, even now. <laughs> well, no, even now they look a little glassy. Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't. Are you on the edge of tears? Well, now I'm thinking about it. No. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. Check out my merchandise at harbling.com. Yeah, most people just slap some letters or images on a t shirt or a hoodie. But not me, yours truly. Guess what? I draw my own designs at hardbling.com. You can see tons of my hand-drawn t-shirts. You can either buy the original or you can buy a print. And uh, man, oh man, wear them loud and proud. Um, I love making these designs for you guys and uh, keeping it personal. So check out the whole uh, catalog. We got hoodies, we got coffee mugs, we got uh, T-shirts, you name it. It's there at harbling.com. Get your uh, Harland original design, wearable art at harbling.com today. And uh, thank you for your support. And I'll just keep the, uh, 
the groovy images coming. Uh, well, as I said to you, buddy, my guy Adam, like you're you're a guy you always seem to know everything about everything. Like I'm not saying that as an insult. You just you're a knowledgeable guy. I would never take knowing everything about everything as an insult. Good. And, yeah. and I always feel like I can go to you and get answers for almost, I don't think I've ever stumped you. Not that I'm trying to stump you. I actually love it that I can throw a, a, a topic at you and you you have, somehow you have the answer. So I wrote a few down that okay. have been kind of nagging me. Let's do it. And I thought, Adam Zachary Carolla mm-hmm. and his crazy knock and knuckles mm. could probably give some insight into this. All right. Um, here we go. Um, why do eggs stick to the end of the spatula? Even after you put them in the wash in the dishwasher. Oh, when you're cooking like scrambled eggs. Yeah. And then you put it in the dishwasher, it comes out and there's still that crust on the tip of the spatula. Hello. Yeah. Excuse me. Why? Well, first off, you exist off cocoa puffs, right? <laughs> like, you don't make eggs. Well, why is this an issue for well, you who's never made eggs? Every now and then. You buy the chub pack <laughs> of breakfast box cereals. Yeah. Do you know, by the way, well, those boxes can be used as a bowl? Yeah, you can. You, they have a perforation down the middle, and yeah. you pull them open. How poor, desperate can one be that can't yeah. afford a trip to Ikea and a couple of cereal balls maybe this though those little mini boxes of cereal what were what constituted the whole shoplifting rule Mm. because people are so poor they're eating out of a box i guess if you're camping even then all right yeah don't deflect i'm deflecting i'm I'm deflecting i want an answer because it's bugging me i i okay it's mostly plastic spatulas yes metal spatulas Things did not adhere nearly point. as well with the old school stainless steel ones. Yeah. Now, the old school stainless steel ones are when we used to use iron skillets. Yeah. But now we use Teflon pans. Okay. And the Teflon pan will be marred by the stainless steel spatula. Okay. So we use a kind of plasticky, rubbery kind yeah. of spatula, okay. which is porous. Okay, and the you're proteins right on the, the edge eggs, of yelling at me again. They get right into that listen, part. Listen. They, they latch onto it. Look, a barnacle. Listen. A barnacle. I tell you. And then the heat Jeez. in the dishwasher weaponizes the <laughs> eggs and it clings and bakes it. Wow. It's like an, a kiln. And it bakes on and clings even harder. So what? you got to go old school iron skillet. Okay. Those are the best. The yeah. Teflon stuff's not good for you. Get an old school iron skillet and get an old school stainless steel spatula. But now the payoff is now with the old iron skillets, the eggs stick to the iron skillet and yes. not to the spatula. Yes. So I don't want to be scraping my eggs off the iron skillet. I'd rather they stick to the plastic spatula. And mm. I don't know. I'm just, you asked why. You, I gave you the answer. Dude, you, you totally illuminated me because I never factored in the material of the yes. spatula. But somehow the egg, and I feel like it's mostly the yolk, mm-hmm. is adhering to the plastic because if you ever spill yolk on a table or anywhere, it when it hardens, man, that stuff's like it's almost like didn't they use egg yolk tempura to, to tempera to, to do paintings back in the Renaissance days? Weren't a lot of the paintings mixed with actual yolk? Uh, uh that makes sense to me. Not something I'm aware of, but well, if you I'm ever get your hands you. on a Rembrandt, throw it in the oven for half an hour and make a souffle. Delicious. I love, I love that band. Well. You know what song the Rembrandt song? Yeah. Boy, I'd love to sit down with you and just kind of flambe the Mona Lisa and it's make a nice, beautiful continental breakfast for you. We could just eat her stupid grinning face. I She's think, always like this. I think the Rembrandts sung and created the theme to Friends. Oh, is that right? I think that's the band, the Rembrandts. Rembrandts. But are you a fan of the Mona Lisa with that stupid shit eating grin she has no, on her face? Like, she's not even hot. What did she do? What 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 happened the set minutes before that picture was taken? Where she's just 
Nat King Cole has a song called Mona Lisa. What's it about? Mona Lisa, Mona, Mona Lisa, Lisa men, Mona men have named you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you trying to seduce me? Yes, bitch? I am. What the fuck, guy? I want, I want a box of cereal when we're done doing my <laughs> refractory period. No ball. Have you ever had sex and sprinkled Rice Krispies on your wife's area, oh, and yeah. during the momentum, you get snap, crackle, pop? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Our next question. Well, I wasn't finished. I had to get to the milk part. All right. But now I okay. feel like maybe I should. Um, why don't ants eat butter, guy? You ever leave anything you leave out on your counter, if there's a dollop of jam, if there's an old steak, if there's a drip of honey, no matter if there's cereal, you leave anything on the counter, those little brown, the little browns, I call them L-I-L dash brown, they'll swarm it. They'll eat it like army ants nibbling nut meat off of Leo Sayers' left testicle. But uh, is Le- Leo Sayers, did he sing, <laughs> I just want to stop? No, he's like, you make me feel like, feel like dancing. I, I want to dance. Like dancing. Yeah. yeah, that guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Oh, I thought he had a slow. I thought Leo Sayers had a yeah, slow. Yeah, he probably one too. does. Anyway. But butter, when you leave butter on the counter, mm-hmm. ants everywhere, mm. the ants do not go near the butter. They don't mm. touch it. You never see one even near it. Mm. And it makes me go, if ants aren't eating, like an ant will eat a dead bird. Right. It'll eat carrion. It'll eat right. decomposed meat. Right. But it won't eat butter, something that we ingest daily. Mm-hmm. Why the hell aren't the ants eating the butter, if you don't mind me busting into a cage and eggs there once again, child? Mm. You know, I have heard that if you sprinkle, like, flour or chalk, I guess it's chalk or something, like, around the dog bowl, that the ants won't go across it. Ever hear that? What about just put butter around it? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm no, saying you said powder. No, what I'm saying is, is what are you? There's saying? certain things that ants won't do, pro- maybe because of the texture of it versus the caloric properties of it. Or whatever, whatever's involved with it. Like Excuse they, me, isn't butter one of the smoothest, velvetous textures on I planet Earth? To, I happen to like it, but there's maybe something with ants that has to so do with it. So an ant will eat an old gumdrop in the crack of your couch, but it won't have velvety, delicious Irish yellow dairy well, butter? Well, I don't even, I'm not necessarily signing off on your premise. I think well, if I took a, a stick of butter and put it on an ant try hill, it. they would, they would, Devour it. Put it right beside the anthill and then put a dollop of jam beside it. And what? They won't go near the butter. Corolla. And what if a homeless guy just happens along with an English muffin and sees this offering and goes, my, looks up to the heavens and goes, God, it's so great. He, he sees a butter dry, and jam on the ground. He has a dry English muffin. Oh, that's all he has. Yeah. And he just sees this and he thinks it's an offering. Or what if it's your aunt? Mm. And then you solve the whole problem. Now right. the ant does Next eat question. Well, Next question. I'm getting a little Next first question. yelling and now pushy. <laughs> um, okay. You know what? Have you ever had your arm fall asleep? Mm-hmm. How come when your arm falls asleep or your leg falls asleep, it doesn't snore? Mm. That's good. I don't think that requires a response. Though. You're right. That was kind that of was a your trick own. one. That was yeah. your job. That was... Mm-hmm. Um, oh, here we go. Why isn't um, rock, paper, scissors just called, I'm going to knock your ass out. Hold on. Peace, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a little, you know, I, I like where we're going with this. Yeah. Um, I like rock, paper, scissors because it's, it's very on, on point. It's it's on the nose. I've never understood it to be honest. I well, it's 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 a good way to settle uh, who's riding shotgun on the way to Vegas. You know, it's a it's a it, it's it. And and by the way, 
We need rock, paper, scissors now more than ever. We do? Oh, yeah. Why? Because nobody carries coins anymore. Yeah, but we carry guns. This is America. <laughs> but they don't... Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> you I used, win, asshole. You used to be able to flip a coin. Rock, paper, scissors, Glock. The coin... I win again, motherfucker. <laughs> I think that's poor form to point your finger at your guest and simulate well, a gun into his You have head. been kind of yelling at me and getting All aggressive. Right. We're getting off point. Okay, sorry. People no longer carry change. When I was a kid, if there was a dispute about who right. got this or who did okay. that, some adult would just pull a coin out and go, All right, call in the air. You know what I mean? Yeah. When's the last time you left the house with actual change in your pockets? That's true. So... We can't settle disputes with coin flipping anymore. We need rock, paper, scissors more than now, more than anything now. Okay. Number one. Number two, I do like the name of it because it's on the nose. It's like the word sleeping bag. What is a sleeping bag? It is a bag that you sleep in. Or it's an old lady that fell asleep in front of the That's television. True. But I could say duvet cover and you don't. Many Americans wouldn't know what a duvet cover is, but they wow. know what a toaster oven is. Yeah, that's true. And they know what a sleeping bag is, and they know the game rock, paper, scissors. Now, you could say to them, do you know the game mumbly peg? And they'd be confused. Depends what funny but little rock, bar you're in. paper, scissors. Did you say mumbly peg? Mumbly peg. Yeah, I think there's a few bars down here in West Hollywood that knows that game real well. <laughs> I mean, God. <laughs> you know what mumbling peg is? I don't want to know. All right. Know. All right. Now, let what me let me give you an example. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay. It's thriving. Okay. Every kid knows it. Right? Yeah. What is the game called, however, where you do two papers? I take my hands. I put, I stretch them out. I put them this way. You put your hands on top of my hands. Yeah. And the person on the bottom tries to slap. The hands on top. Is it Pinochle? No. Slap Happy. Nobody knows the name. It wasn't given a name. It wasn't? Nobody knows the name of this game. I've asked a million people. Like, oh, that's sad, slappy, the hand, you know. Yeah. And you go, yeah, you've played this. They go, yeah, a million times. I go, what's it called? And they're like. I think it's slap. Pinochle. Pinochle? 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 Yeah. Well, don't give me that look after you just did peg me mumbles or whatever it is. Knuckles a card game. What was the one you said? Just a mumbly m- peg. Yeah, don't give me mumbly pegs when I'm I'm doing pee knuckles. Knuckles a card game. Well, sometimes. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what are we doing here? What a wordsmith. The, you, my you, point is, is well, rock paper scissors has a name. Everyone knows it. The hand slap game didn't get properly titled. And now no one knows what it's called. All right. Now, I just noticed, because I'm an observer, when you went like this, one of your pinkies is jammed. Hold your fingers up. Oh, on this hand. Look, hold them up for the camera. You're, you're, that pinky won't go down. My, th- on th- your th- other th- hand. Yeah, I, I, my Look, hands are fucked up. What happened? But that one's locked. That one's locked. Like You're, like the, you're almost like the witch from Snow White with that finger. No, that one. Look at. Well, do you see the surgery from this one? What happened? Too Major much, surgery. <laughs> too much pee knuckle or what? Mumbly peg. What? You, what was the surgery for? I have uh, <laughs> ruined my hands through boxing and construction and you know many other endeavors over the years. Wow. Can you mumbly peg? Do you know what mumbly peg is? There's some bars in West Hollywood. <laughs> You're gonna let. Laugh. You know, you just said you ruined your hand, and ever since you've been here, you've been knocking all over this wood. Who's there? Do you think? Do you think you know where it's coming from now? Who's there? Okay, let me see where we're gonna wind this up here. Oh, here, this one. Come on. Where do birds sleep at night? Right? There's something like twenty trillion birds. There's like mm-hmm. a million birds for every human. Mm-hmm. Okay, it gets dark. Mm-hmm. shouldn't you see birds landing on window ledges and on your branches and on your picnic table? Have you ever seen a sleeping bird anywhere? Have you ever seen a squirrel take a shit? 
or even come across squirrel shit or yes. stepped in squirrel shit. I have seen squirrel shit. You have? Yeah, I haven't physically seen it. <laughs> and I'm dying I'm to. I'm saying there's a squirrel in this town for every bird. Yeah. And birds... I can't, my car won't make it two days without bird shit. Right. I've never found squirrel shit on the hood of my car. Oh, okay. I see. There are trees. Saying. They're doing the same thing the bird's doing. Yeah, but, but squirrels, you know, at nighttime, they go to their little nests. Not every bird has a nest. I'm, so I'm, I'm where I'm the hell are they sleeping? Why I don't... think they all have a nest. Oh, I don't know, dude. I, it's a valid question. Like seagulls. Where were you ever go to the beach? There's no seagulls at night. They're not there. Where are they? Check into the Motel 6. Where are the seagulls? Do you think the seagulls yeah. were formerly like a proud bird of prey? Yeah. And then they started just eating French fries out of dumpsters in Santa Monica. Yeah. And there's old like elder seagulls used to go, we used to soar with hawks. We fought with eagles. And now these lazy, oh, they go down to the pier and they eat curly fries out of a dumpster. We used to hunt. Oh, we used to dive into the ocean and now they're in the mall parking lot Uh, eating a Panda Express sweet and sour spare room. Right. Now they're they're picking junk Uh, out of the garbage can next thing you know they're going to be going into stores and shoplifting 900 dollars oh, worth I'd, of merchandise i'd snatch a whole trout out of a lake and uh, with my talons you know talons they, yes they must be looking at these young seagulls just going seagulls look at you don't have talons they have webbed feet ospreys and eagles and hawks have talons they're they're raptors they're predatory birds a seagull all a seagull could do is slap something I was trying to paint a, a dramatic I picture. Know, I was trying to paint a dramatic picture. For a wordsmith, picture. I think you got to do a little better. Well, I didn't know I was going to be literally <laughs> checked on well, every one of my discussions. When, when you say it right off the top, you're a wordsmith guy. <laughs> I was speaking as an elderly noble seagull. What would that, <laughs> what would, what would that seagull sound like, Harley? <laughs> I say there, old boy. <laughs> I'm just saying seagulls. Yeah. Look, humanity and curly fries and McNuggets and dumpsters have only been around for I about know. for 10 minutes. And, and they love count. it. Seagulls must have been around for 2 million years. Dude, I was, what did they eat? I was at Arby's the other day and there was a seagull in front of me picking up food. Mm. I'm like, and it's like drive Wah! through, drive through, drive through. Oh, wow. I think seagulls would be great at the, the pea knuckle with their webbed fingers. Yeah, but not good at mumbly peg. And by the well, way, it's not I, called pea knuckle. Pea knuckle's a card game. Well, what's mumbly peg? That's an ass game. Mumbly peg is when you put your hand down and you take a steak knife and you go as fast as you can through your fingers. It is? Yeah. Oh, that was in the movie Alien. It was yeah. a scene in Alien when they did oh, that. Oh, right, right. All right, let's do our final bit, buddy. I know you love this because you were here before. By the way, this is Adam Carolla's second visit to the Harlan Highway. Thanks for coming back, buddy. My pleasure. And you know what? Before we do this, plug your uh, plug your uh, your podcast and your stand up. And I know you're writing books. And Adam does it all, man. Come on, tell the folks where they can get in touch with the kid. You go to adamcarolla.com. Yeah. Find out live dates. Tell them about your great podcast. You're, you're one of the pioneers of this genre. You can hear the podcast for free. Yeah. Just go to amcroll.com. Everything's there. Okay. Kind of not as ha as I wanted it to be, but <laughs> I mean, wordsmith, yes. Cheerleader, fuck off to hell. I don't like well, plugging my own stuff. Well, I, I want you to because it's important and you're good at what you do. You're great at what you do. So go Thanks, check out the Adam Carolla podcast. What, what's your latest book? You always have a book going. Uh, everything reminds me of something. Yeah, check out his book. Go to adamcarolla.com, your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, support this guy. Check him out. Not that he needs it from me, but you're a talent that's worth uh, endorsing. Now, this is, as you know, speaking of over in Finland and Holland and uh, you know all those country, those dainty countries, this is a Dutch clog, mm-hmm. and this is words from a wooden shoe. And what mm-hmm. we do is you reach in, you grab a word, and see if it elicits a memory or a story from somewhere in your life to share with the gang. 
Let's see what we got here. It's our final segment, buddy. What do we got? Celebrity crush. Oh, here we go. Here we glow. Who is it? Who is my celebrity crush? Can I guess? Yeah. Barry Manilow. OJ. Well, that's a celebrity death, really. Because you're not going to be alive. Around. Yeah, but you're not going to be around for long. He <laughs> may be. He's cool with dudes. Oh, no way. Not really. Yeah, yeah you're right. The dudes are cool with him because they're not breathing. Never thought about that. I. Who would my celebrity, celebrity... crush? Mm. And it doesn't have to be today. It could be when you were a kid. It could be today. It could be mm. maybe both. Fill us in on who was the kid one and who's the current one when, without getting in trouble with the lady. When I was in, like, you know, junior high, I would watch Charlie's Angels. Oh, and I, I was loved, hoping you'd go there. I loved Cheryl Ladd. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't a Farrah fan. I loved Farrah. I was a Cheryl Ladd fan. But see, Cheryl didn't have the poster. Farrah had that iconic poster in the red bathing suit where her nipples were sticking out like someone dropped two, two snicker bars down her top. Yeah. I mean, these things were sticking out like an ant could walk the plank off those nipples. They were mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. But why Cheryl Ladd? Cheryl Ladd had, had a better bosom than fair fair was kind of true. flat chested true true Cheryl she was more Ladd nipple than meat had had a, had a nice full bosom and then once a year they'd go to hawaii and <sighs> they'd force cheryl had to get in a bikini and I, that was just the best wow so i'm 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 cheryl lad yeah and fast forward to now yeah sticking with cheryl lad still hot come on really I, i'm telling you the woman is 70 years old in a Still smoke hot. show. Yeah. Have you ever met her? Never. Would you like to? No. Why? Because I don't feel like I could contain myself. Okay. There would, there would be, you know, it would be like, would you, it'd be like saying, would you want to ever meet the priest that molested your son for 12 years? And the answer would be no, because I'd be in jail. Yeah, you'd 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 off them, right? Oh, that's that's heavy. That took that's a I really feel that way with Cheryl Ladd. Wow, that took a real like kind of dark turn. Yeah, almost like a Charlie's Angels episode. Well, when almost. you've seen what I've seen, Harlan, yeah. you understand. Um, quickly with Charlie's Angels, and see if you concur. Mm-hmm. And I just threw that word out for you because yeah. you're a what wordsmith. Um. There was the original Angels was Jacqueline Smith. It was Farah, And then there was the other one. Kate Jackson. I just didn't get it. Like, no offense. She wasn't like a smoke show to me. She was very, so she was cute. She was pretty, but I just don't, I never got why she was in the mix. Am I wrong? You know, those, those shows back in the day, they kind of needed the, you know, every one of these shows was like, this guy's the wheel man, and this guy's the knife expert, and this guy's yeah. the second story man, and this guy's the demolition man. Like, they never had well, the they same were, guy. Well, they, they were women. The right. angels were women. But I'm saying, they needed the blonde, they needed the brunette, and then they always need the one that you think you could get, even though you can't. Oh, I see. The you know sort what of I mean? more average one. Yeah, every got show ya. got yeah. Every show had that right. Had that one you thought you could get, but so th- you couldn't. That was for like the blue collar guys watching. Like, okay, I could maybe have a shot with that one. Yeah, but that's how the bands work too. Like, look, uh, I I love the Go Go's. I'm never going to get to Belinda Carlisle, but I could bang the drummer. Yeah, got see what ya. I'm saying? That's what that was. And drummers love banging. Yeah. A great Robert De Niro movie. What? Bang the drum slowly. It is. It's also a bar down in West Hollywood. <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? <laughs> Let us. Let us who? Let us in. <laughs> you, you don't knock in the middle of a knock. I like to punctuate. Yeah, but you knock my once. knock knock jokes with a knock. God. Yeah. Knock knock. Who's there? The doors. The Doors who? The band. 
God, I don't even. Uh, buddy, one last time before we go, please mention your podcast. Tell the folks. Uh, you go to amcrawl.com. It's there every day. It's free. We have great guests. And Harlan Williams on the show. Yeah, I love going on your show. And uh, live shows, <laughs> dates all over the country. Yeah. Books, che- merch. Check them out, Adam Carolla. And will you do me one favor? This is for real. Hmm. When you go home, I want you to put a, a dollop of butter out near an ant nest and tell me next time I see you or text me the results because I'm not even kidding about the ant. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, knock, knock, who's there? The theme song, that's who. Uh, thank you, Adam, for being on the uh, Holland <laughs> Highway <laughs> podcast. Thank you. Uh, what a treat. And until next time, everybody, keep your butter in the fridge and chicken chow mein, baby. <laughs> <laughs>